to Jeremiah chapter 12. That's what we read from, right? Verse 9 and 10 says, um, My heritage is unto me as a speckled bird. The birds round about, round about are against her. Come ye, assemble all the beasts of the field. Come to devour. Scripture goes on to say, Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. They have trodden my portion underfoot. And they have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. Verse 11 says, which we didn't read, it says, They have made it desolate, and being desolate, it mourneth unto me. The whole land is made desolate, because no man laid it to heart. The topic of our sermon today is the image of the beast. The image of the beast. In Revelation chapter 13, the scripture explains to us the beast. The opening text of the same Revelation 13 tells us the actual origin of this place. But oftentimes it is conflicting because of fear. Because it points to an entity that has ravaged those who oppose or speak about the evil committee. I also want to step back a little in order for us to understand what Revelation 13 is saying, we must realize that chapter 12 is the foundation of what is being said in 13. History have laid out the sins of this entity which became an establishment and the agitator of one world order. And uh, a title called Globalism. This we know quite well. The explanation of 2300 days, which became 2300 years, gives the account and the fulfillment of a deadly wound. To this entity, many of us want to forget the prophetic layout of faith and thereby forget the third angel message of Revelation 14 and verse 9. I'm tempted here to say that what I'm doing now is lay out the groundwork for a Bible study this evening. I know that was so still, but we will actually get more deeper into it. Amen? So you know, those of us who understand a little more preaching, and I don't understand much, we we'll realize um, exactly what will happen at all Bible studies. We can ask the question, put your input, and we help one another. Revelation 14 and verse 9 bring us, brings to us three messages in one that we cannot forget. And what we cannot forget is that principle does not change. Mm -hmm. Revelation 14 verse 9, if you turn with me, and we all know it, many of us who are at this for a long time, 
can actually say it without going to the scripture. But uh, I'm saying that this one text, nine in particular, but we know it goes on further, but nine in particular is loaded with information. All we have to do is just slow down a little. And then we will see it. So I'll read it in your ear and it says, And the third angel followed them. That will fill many encyclopedias. If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, principle does not change. And because of understanding that, we give ourselves the readiness. That only comes by preparing. In Revelation 14, verse 9, the word T H I R D this word third explains and portrays the life of Esther, David. Daniel, John the Revelator, and Jesus Christ, our Savior. To show how prepared they were to meet a king, and the standing ovation even received when the kingdom was rotted, the kingdom of the devil was rattled and damaged by the behavior of these servants of the Lord. What I believe that we are not getting is that we are not even looking at Hitler and his third right and Marx and Lenin and the country we reside, that we can be prepared in a turn to actually be prepared to meet the enemy of our soul and the savior of our soul, Jesus Christ. You understand when I say the enemy of our soul we're talking about. We will see him. But he will be destroyed. Yeah. And the Savior of our soul will live forever. Mm -hmm. And ever. ever. We are very protective and prepared about the worship <coughs> of the beast itself. But the image we are not seeing Christian was asked what is the image of the beast and a lot of people get it wrong a lot of people we are not seeing we are not understanding the image of the beast neither the mark but I'm not here today to tell you about the mark. We are just here to talk about the image of the beast. I gave you a, a printout. Um, this is taken from the website of Ellen G. White Estate. They put it out. So if you go online and type in God and Children of the Law, you're going to see comes up before you. So, and the handout that we have, this paper that I give you, I'm going to go to it now. Well, I didn't give Clover in this either, you got to come probably, or Clover go sit beside your son. He's on my turn the camera, so if not, we'll be able to uh, move up and down. He said, what, what it is? What is the image of the beast? And so the information is, is before you. And I don't want to deviate 
and no time from what is before you. He said, how is it to be formed? So we have two things that before us you now, the image of the beast and how this image was being formed. Um, in short, because you have it before you, the, 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 the understanding is that the church, the power of the church, or the church power, will use the government's power to penalize its people. That's basically what is the image of the beast. Oh, was that fun? But it's, uh, everything is right before you, right there. It says, um, the image is made by two armed beasts, and is an image to the beast. I don't know if you understand this yet, mm -hmm. but we have um, Republican and Democrat. That's the understanding I receive. But now we realize that something was under the shadows and it's beginning to come to light now. Democracy is actually socialism and because of socialism it's communism. This is what this country has been for a long time. Talk about Hitler, talk about Marx, Marx and we talk about Lenin. And as soon as your eyes are open to this, the devil want to kill you. Mm -hmm. And so you have to protect yourself by prayer, the study of the Bible, and obedience to his word. I cannot stress this on enough. Obedience to his word. In all thy ways acknowledge the Lord, and he will direct your path. And if you are going one way and the Lord is going the other way, you know what's going to happen. Sickness, Galore. Sorry for that question. Um, I don't call um, explanation. And um, this is not on the paper, but um, I'm just impressed to say it because it happened to me. For years, I was a very revengeful individual. I ran away from my country because I didn't want to go to West Indies College. Didn't like the vegetarian food. <laughs> I went to one of Jamaica's best high school, Willardine really High School. I guarantee you I'd be in a pass or whatever you want, as long as you graduate fourth form. But I, I became very, I was very, 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 very revengeful. And it started by one night I disobeyed my father. I went to a, a, a school hall when I should have gone home and turned on the light. They tricked me and I turned on the light and this man who I grew up with was dancing with somebody apart from his wife and he hit me so hard I couldn't eat for this. And I made up my mind to kill him when I grew up. And I could not grow. You get that part? <coughs> I could not grow. Um, it was so serious that I became a cop. And when I encountered him, they tell me I couldn't draw my gun because he was a friend of the, um, the, the inspector. And I, I think I cried that day because I got my opportunity. I don't know how I would catch him again. Well, I didn't catch him in Jamaica, but I came here one. In America, I. I Saw so him driving or he was going opposite direction and I almost killed myself at Colfax and Springfield Boulevard because I decided I was going to crash his, my car into him and just finish him. So he never worked either. He escaped me and by the time I reached home, my father and everybody who knew me and knew me was calling me, begging me to stop it. And that day I listened to my father. And from then I began to grow. We know we're talking about the image of the beast. Mm -hmm. I didn't even plan to say all that. But it, it grows. 
it grows from something of disobedience into something that you can't handle. Because I don't the devil. If they want, want me to kill this man, I end up I'll be in jail now. Some people are the boat of us with it. I'll probably never have hung or something. And this is what faces us, the image of the beast, we will not really understand. And because we reach this point, we don't understand, we just can't grow. Faith, in faith we become faithless, in hope we become hopeless, and you could go on and on and on and on and on. When you understand the image of the beast, the devil will intensify his thing to kill you. But you have to be purposeful. Sorry for that part of English language. You have to have a purpose in your heart that you're going to see your Savior comes what may and you're going to hold on. Not on your own strength, but on the strength that He gives. Amen. And so though my story about me was short, um, and I thought, you know, I would tear up a little bit. You know, I, I realized from that day when I said yes, I realized that I could go to church and I could sing, I could pray, I went back to church. And um, I become a, 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 a mouthpiece for God. That even the pastor never liked me. They wonder where I get this thing from. But I didn't forget where I was trained and where I went to school anyway. And they actually forget about my parents and the men who preach and teach me as I grow. And so today it is a glorious blossoming for me. I don't take no foolishness still. And my wife often sometimes say that I still have the police in me. And I often say to her, God sent me there for a reason. Because um, that's why I'm an no nonsense person. I believe in Christ, and I know what He says. He, he means that exactly what He says. No diversion to the Word of God. God yet a way that seemed right unto yeah. a man, yeah. but the end thereof are the ways of death. Yes. And who want to really die? Right. Mm. So in continuing the reading, it says. It is also called an image of the beast. Then to learn what the image is like and how it is to be formed, we must study the characteristics of the beast itself, which is the papacy. I'm not going to read this whole thing. I'm going to really cut it short. But we have to understand that the, Vat the Vatican is where all laws are formed. In a place that is called the Holy See. Within and nobody who is a citizen of the Vatican is born there. None. You are hired and then you become a citizen. Who are you? Well, you know the answer. That is the point. And it goes on to say when the early church became corrupted by departing from the simplicity of the gospel. And accepting Eden rights and customs, she lost the spirit and power of God. I want to really say this again. Because this is what we are saying here. That's why we, we, we people jump all over us and say there is no power in the church. But you can't blame them. Because they are they're not seeing it. They are not seeing the power and spirit of God. We do not do walls of our church. Because I think it's in 2 Corinthians 11 verse 3. Paul even himself cried out about through the simplicity in Christ. Um, Adam and Eve, or Eve, they get messed up. And he said, if you let we acknowledge this and understand this, we the same thing and have become of us too. There's a simplicity in the gospel, just trust and obey. Because really there is no other way. So said when the early church became corrupted by departing from the simplicity of the gospel. And as we said this morning, because of phrenology, 
psychology, and um, certain intensified philosophy, the gospel is not being preached anymore. Our forefathers did tell us that where the gospel is not being preached is not a church. I wonder if you hear me. Amen. Many of us, we go and we sing and we pray and um, we think we worship. But where was your focus when the singing was going on? But could you be focused anyhow? Could you be focused? By accepting healing rights and custom, she lost the spirit and power of God. Yeah. Long before Constantine, he just finished what he had was to do. And in order to control the conscience of the people, she sought the support of the secular power. Nice word, mm -hmm. secular. The result was the papacy. A church that controlled the power of the state and employed to further our own ends. I'm telling you, blood flowed the street. A lot of people died. A lot of people died. It says that the church killed more people than what died in other parts. And they're not even thinking about us. We were dragged from our native homes. And I was brought here. It's the image of the beast. A church that controlled the power of the state and employed it to further our own ends, especially for the punishment of heresy. This is something that shouldn't be in church. You, you know, um, we see it multiplying again. This is the only thing that destroy prayer meetings. Here's it. The devil has used it. And I guarantee you today, if you have that purpose in your heart, and you, Brother Francis, Sister Clover, Brother Bertram, and um, Sister Arthurs, and Sister Stuart, decided to have a little prayer meeting going. After a while, you're going to hear, did I call the four Sister Del? You're going to hear, he said, Sister Del did say this, mm -hmm. Brother Francis did say this. Until after a while, we stop praying. <laughs> Why this continue to happen to God, people? Here it says, still works today. But in a different form. In order for, in order for the United States to form an image of the beast, the religious power must so control the civil government that the author of the state will also be employed by the church to accomplish our own ends. And it is happening as we speak. In 2 Timothy 2, 15 to 20, something is said, which I think um, is the, it should be national attention. 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. I'm going to read it in your hearing. Um, stop in a little while. Then when we come back, we will um, go through it. Um. Second Timothy two, verse fifteen. I want you to really understand um, something here today. We are not diverting from the topic by reading this. It says, study to show thyself approved unto God. I want you to actually look when it says study, not to Brother Francis, not to Sister Clover, it is whatever you are doing, is not for any form of show off. You are studying to show yourself approved unto God. And it says a workman that needed not to be ashamed, right to divide in the word of truth. But listen to what 16 says. Um, this is very, very serious. But shun profane and vain babblings. For they will increase unto more ungodliness. Many times we are in conversation and we want to be diplomatic. We want to be the person's friend. But you can be the leader. Bring it back to where you want it. Vain babblings. Profane. 
And it's going to increase the more right before me, he says, ungodliness. And, and, and it, even get, it even get more terrible in 17. He says, and your word will eat as though they conquer. And it give of two, of two persons, um, Hymenius and Philetus. You know, um, are we really Hymenius and Philetus? Are we children of the king? But we have to be able to see that the king. I learned that the word, that kanka is a worm that you can't see with your own eye. And kanka is what? Eat steel, eat metal. So when we involve in vain babblings, that's what we are doing to our soul. It's worse than cancer. And um, it is very frightening too. Because if this thing begins to eat you, when they diagnose you, they're not going to diagnose you as a person with cancer. And I said, right, cancer. They're going to say you have cancer. But could it be disobedience eating your, ever, your entire body out? Have we ever ever talked about that? Hmm. Be not deceived. God is not mock. And whatever you show, shall also read. But the high point brings us out to individuality. Thyself. In the scripture, I'll be reading. Thyself. Yourself must do it. To be approved unto God. Saying, you do not have time to forget this. That here is not our home. We are all on probation. And we need to understand that God is not joking. Remember that he went to the cross. I often say it because of many times for our young people that um, Michelangelo was he the painter of Christ? He just put on those, those little white things around him, him um, to cover shame or to, to, to make his work be celebrated. Christ was naked on the cross. Mm. When he go through, he go through that for you and for me. And in closing, Amen. I want us to turn to Ecclesiastes 12, 12 to 14. I mentioned verse 12, which many times uh, is being overlooked. It says, And further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books, there is no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. He didn't say you shouldn't study, amen? He just said much study in a weary of the flesh. I, I, remember, I remember at one time, you know, my wife thought that something was wrong with me. Because I couldn't sleep, sister, then, at night. I, 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 I couldn't find it in me to sleep. I had was to know. You know, when I was through, I've gone through some college study and, and I've made good headway in high school, realized that some you, you just you just can't feel. So listen, if anything, let the teacher wake up in class. Because I must pass. You do that for yourself. Why are you doing the same thing for Christ? This is not talking about everlasting life. You're not talking about living to... Oh, how old is your father? 92. You live long, man. That's nothing compared to what we will receive. 
if we obey and do the word of God. Amen. So listen to what the scripture says. And I know you know it. But that's why the Spirit of God have drive me here to, to ask us to actually listen and look closely to what's happening here. The, the, the story of Solomon is not a nice one, you know. For those of us who get into it. Because he leaned out to his own understanding. What a God. And he was doing some stuff. Yeah. Really, that when he began to read it, so you was the wisest man. And behaving like this, Solomon turned from God. I want you to know that. Mm -hmm. But one part we read that he become, well, um, this is my understanding, okay? He become infeminate. He became a faggot. Sorry for my broken language. But I hope you, you get me. I want to drive it home. Because this is not said in regular church settings. But let's go back here. Let's, let, let's go back here. He said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. This is the conclusion of the whole matter. In churches today, they tell you cannot fear God and worship Him. That's a lie and a deception. All the prophets had some time fall down. The angel grabbed them up and said, no, you don't even see the right person yet. The scripture said, fear God and give glory to him. And it says, the fear of the Lord tended to life. Yes. And when you act this, you will never be visited with evil. Proverbs 19 and verse 23. Fear God and keep his commandments. You know, I am very, very probably, and there are people better than me. I, I, I am, I am. And I thank God for working on me. Because before, when Friday morning, I'm a nut. Because when sun set, I don't want you here, nobody be saying, well, oh, um, them gonna shave, or they wanna iron. I don't wanna. This is sacred time, and sometimes I'm under the deep land under this. You cannot lean on your own understanding when it comes to the Sabbath. People have died for this. The Lord has established that He was Lord of the Sabbath. What did He do Him? Well, we know. I'm just, I'm just packaging Him for us to understand that Sabbath is sacred time. It takes our holy people to worship our holy God on our holy day. How he did it, I don't know, but I know that we are worshiping him today. He made the covering. He made the covering. Do not destroy it. Abraham staggered not. Keep his commandment, for this is the whole duty of man. Amen. You know what? If you look in your Bible, you will realize that the word duty is in italics. And that's not in the original writing. They put it in for easy reading or for smooth reading. So if you were to eliminate the word duty, you will be convinced today that Jesus is coming again. And we must know a lot about the image of the beast that we can understand which will be clear. It says... Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandment, for this is the whole man. No duty now. This is the whole man. Because since this is not in the original writing, let's go back. They put duty for, and, and it is, they put duty for smooth reading. So let's eliminate the smooth reading and go to the tough, the hard part. So for God shall bring, this part is dangerous too, but I'm closing. For God shall bring every work into judgment. Nothing escape his eyes. Nothing. So if it take us to tell somebody that we're sorry, then let us do it. Some people even hold grudge. And when the person dead, you still want to grudge. You, you, you got to be out of your mind. You, you got to... 
For God shall bring every work into judgment. Amen? Amen. And every secret thing. Whether it be good or whether it be I pray to thee. I pray to thee that we make it to be the good. May Amen. God bless us as we prepare our hearts to continue to worship Him through this day. And that we will bring fruit, bring fruit, fruit. Amen. Amen.